Oh no, Bill Harry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we are live. We are live. We are hey live. everybody, yes we are live. We are so, we're live AF. We are live <laughs> AF. <laughs> Thank you for we that. Are, I'm red because I was just laughing when we were signing on. Yeah, exactly. You're live. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm Dr. Keith Bell. Wellness Wednesday is where we bring together practitioners of the healing arts and the creative arts and show how the creative arts can be healing arts. Um, we're brought to you by um, Artists Striving to End Poverty, or A-STEP, and we've been using and I want to mention this because last week we talked about Wholeness Wednesday. We did. We've been using the definition by the Global Wellness Institute that defines wellness as an active pursuit of activities, choices, and lifestyle that lead to a state of wholeness. And we're hoping that we're going to provide you some, some choices of lifestyle that are going to lead to a state of wholeness. This is my co-host, Miss Mary Mitchell Campbell. I am Mary Mitchell Campbell. And I am the founder of ASTEP, Artist Driven in Poverty, and I also work as a Broadway music director, musician, pianist, conductor person. Um, <laughs> and I have a very special guest with us today, which is Asmaret Gebra Mikkel. Yes, yes, perfect. <laughs> um, Asmaret is a phenomenal performer. She has been in a slew of Broadway shows, such as Footloose, Wicked, Spam a Lot, Lone Star Love, In the Heights, where she won a drama desk, Woo! Legally Blonde, Elf, Book of Mormon, Dream Girls. But I met her doing Sweet Charity. Yes. We did Sweet Charity with Sutton Foster. And we became very good friends during That's that right. time. Actually, yes. we were quite instantaneous. It was instantaneous. Yeah, it was totally. Instantaneous. I was immediately like, you. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be friends with you. I was the same way because we also had known of each other for so long. We were sort of circling each other. I can't believe we hadn't worked together sooner. And then it just happened, and it was instant. It was love at first sight. Love at first sight. Magic. It really <laughs> was. Um, so, Asmaret, thank you for being here. You actually joined us recently for a different event, um, sort of around similar topics, which we were very grateful for, and several people. Um, requested more time with you because you got some wisdom to drop you got some wisdom girl no pressure i mean i don't what if i have <laughs> nothing like, to no, offer to today <laughs> but um <laughs> drink water that's all i know I'm just kidding. yeah we had an event a couple a week or so ago called the art of wellness and yeah. asmaret was a guest yeah. and performed a lovely song that we would like to play but we can't well because we're technologically challenged technologically challenged <laughs> Um, but but it was really good. It was really good. Um, you can just imagine how good it was. Uh, <laughs> as correct, so we are in a very crazy time. And last mm -hmm. week we had um, Tanya Burl, who I think you might know. Yes. Yes. Amazing Tanya Burl um, was on with us. And she very succinctly pointed out that we were in a triple pandemic, the pandemic of climate change, the pandemic of COVID-19, and the pandemic of racial oppression in this country. And that the combination of this is like creating quite a big upheaval. But for me, one of the most impactful things that I have read through this process was your op-ed, um, which was entitled, I'm tired of being the token black friend. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the process of writing this and like how the response has been? Yeah, um, it's, it's actually been kind of, a whirlwind in terms of the, the time from when I first started speaking up about anything related to racism or inequality um, to the time that, that the piece actually came out. I was on the phone with Josh Gad, who's a good friend of mine from, well, we did Book of Mormon together, but we um, actually have known each other for years. And he called me one morning, I was having coffee. We were just, you know, chit chatting and he, he was just, we were just sort of discussing what was going on and the George Floyd videos had, had been surfacing all over the place. And prior to, to talking to Josh on the phone, I think I may have said this the last time we spoke, um, I just had this overwhelming sense of heaviness, sadness, as you can imagine. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've watched videos like this before and I, and I just think because of the state that we're in, 
with these other pandemics piled on. It was just too much. It was too triggering. And I spent the I spent an entire day in bed, curtains drawn, just like I deleted Instagram from my phone. I just couldn't take any more information. I was I was done. Um, and then I was checking in with other friends of mine, black women, black men, who were doing the exact same thing. And I could not believe it. And I suddenly felt so grateful, A, that I had people to reach out to, uh, and B, that I wasn't alone in, in feeling this way. So that that happened. And then the next day, I got up, I felt a little bit better. I, I went to make coffee. Josh called me on the phone and we started talking about everything. And, and I had, you know, I was in my room that whole day prior. So I had a lot of time to think and meditate on what was happening and how I felt. And um, and so by the time Josh and I had this conversation, you know, he'd, he had said after like 15 minutes, you know, I would love to use my platform in any way that I can. I would love to to help spread your message and, and you know, amplify your voice. And I was like, oh, great, you know, sort of not thinking about it. And then we were talking a little bit more and I said something that that struck him and he said, do you want to go live right now? <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, sure. Um, I was in a robe. I mean, I had a mug in my hand. I was not prepared, you know. Um, and we just went on Instagram Live for 18 minutes or something like that. And just had a conversation in, in the way that you can with a very good friend of yours. You know, it was, it was, it was vulnerable. It was honest. It was, um, very candid. I, you know, if, if you pointed out stuff that was said to me now, I would be like, I don't remember any of that, you know, just sort of flowed. And, and Josh and I have a very funny, jovial, humorous relationship. So it was sort of all of these things mixed in. And so that was, that happened on a Tuesday. And I think the next morning, um, Emily McGill reached out to me and said, I've been approached to, oh, I, I, I've been approached by Broadway News about um, contributing a piece to them. You know, if I, she, they asked if, if I knew anyone who would be interested, you know, because at this point, um, a lot of my colleagues had, had released videos or statements about the inequity that we, that we witnessed in the theater community. So when this opportunity came, I initially was terrified. Um, and then I was, I said, yes, though. <laughs> I said, yes, even though I was scared. I was like, yes, I'll do it. Uh -huh. I, ha I have something, I yes, and it. I had, I knew I had something to say. I've been doing this long enough. I've experienced, you know, enough situations or, or I've witnessed people experiencing things that, that, I, that I could either shed light on or be candid about. And so I spent the, the whole day thinking about it and thinking about what my, some of my peers were saying. Um, and I was like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna talk about? What am I gonna talk about? And then I started exercising. And I always, I, my best thoughts come to me in the shower, I used to be on the subway, um, walking, anytime I'm moving, anytime there's some kind of m movement of energy, I feel like I get out of my head and, I, and I, the thoughts are able to sort of flow, you know, and the inspiration. And so I was working out and I suddenly just had this idea and I, I almost immediately stopped working out, sat in front of my computer and just started typing a draft. That was Wednesday. Thursday, the piece was, was printed, published, I mean. Wow. So, yeah, wow. and I, it was fast. It was and fast. It, so are you glad you did it? Did you, have a, did you have a moment of, oh shit, Yes. this is out there? The minute the editor told me that it was that it was live, I was like, that I had a no shit moment. I was like, uh -huh. what if everybody hates it? What if people criticize me? What if people say that that's not true? Or you know, what? And and the thing is, it, it doesn't matter because that's my truth, and well, I'm it's true to from you. My, it's true to me. And and something that that I and other people have been saying is that we're not a monolith. You know, we we are we are we have several voices and several perspectives and several experiences, and so I approached it from a very personal place as well, you know, and I, and, and also a place of, of holding accountability for myself and then in turn asking other people to hold themselves accountable as well. So, so yeah. I'm not in the theater community and sometimes I ask some really stupid questions to theater people. Stupid. Not stupid. <laughs> but my thought is when I read your list of everything that you've accomplished for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. You're seriously sometimes the only black friend in all of these shows 
they can be just you and maybe one other person of color. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and, and it, you know, it, it's, it's not specifically that, you know, it, it, well, it is, it, it's, it's a lot of, of things on that list, but it also is, um, I mean, the, the shows that I haven't gotten where I've walked into an audition and I, it's, it's been, it's been me and a bunch of my black girlfriends who all know that we're auditioning for one track mm -hmm. or one role. Um, you know, right. so there, there's there, there are rules that I didn't that I didn't get, but I was still auditioning to play that part. You know, or if right. a friend has an idea for a show, I'm the black friend. I'm the black friend, or the neighbor, or you know, the accessory, because it's being told from the perspective of somebody who doesn't look like me. So why would I be the centerpiece necessarily? You know, if someone's if someone's circle looks a certain way, that's the, right. the story that they're also going to portray. Yeah, and in Keith, Keith, in the business, we sort of, in a situation like what Asmara is describing, we sort of call it the usual suspects. Like, right. you go to an audition, it's like, oh, it's the usual suspects. Yeah. It's the like, same people who are up for the same roles that you're up for. So what does that do for friendships? What does that do for you and your girlfriends? I mean, there's a part of you that has to be competitive, yet supportive of each other. Yeah, I, you know, it's... I think I, I touched on this a little bit because I think that the danger in having a system set up like that is that it can pit us against each other because there are so few roles and it can in further perpetuate this idea of competition, right? It's already a competitive business. Like we didn't need, we didn't need like token roles to make it feel any less cutthroat. Um, but I, I've noticed for the most part that black women have used that as, as an opportunity to rally together. I mean, I, I have friends okay. who are on a group, um, who are in group Marco Polo chains. And I was in an audition before everything shut down. And I remember seeing some girlfriends who were also at that audition and some who weren't that were like, oh, I heard you were at this audition. I was like, how did you, what? Oh, cause I'm on a thread with so-and-so and so, you know, all these black women that I love and respect and see it all the, you know, who are also usual suspects. Um, so I think that actually makes, I, I, I would like to think that it, that it brings, brings us together. Yeah. I think I, I, from what I've experienced of our industry, I think it straight, I think honestly, Keith, I think there's so much competition sort of built in that, that we look for alliances and we look for, yeah. um, okay. there's definitely a sense of like, if the job's meant to be yours, it will be yours. And yeah. we all sort of support each other. I feel a, a lot of the time anyway. Um, but I, I, what I love about the story of you coming to the terms with like writing that is um, facing your fear of like using your voice, which yeah. I think is such a, an important thing for all of us to be reminded of. You know, because I've been talking a lot with people about um, big decisions I've made and oftentimes when someone else gave me permission and I, and I have to just be like, why did someone else have to give me permission? Mm -hmm. Like... Why was it? Why was I not ready to give permission to myself? You know what I mean? Like in those yeah. moments of like big decision, but also the fact that you reached out to your friends, like the importance of community, mm -hmm. um, and the and the fact that right now, as we're all feeling isolated in this triple pandemic time, like how do we, how do we stay connected? Mm -hmm. Like how are you staying connected currently? I well, I'm lucky that I have a lot of friends who live nearby. Um, so I've, I've it recently I've taken walks or I've ridden my bike down to see people who live, who live close enough and we, we stay distanced and, and communicate. Um, I mean, zoom burnout is a real thing, but FaceTiming and zooming has helped, you know, um, even though I'm like, after a while, I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I, you know, I, I've taken this opportunity to both connect with people and also acknowledge the feeling of being alone and 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 actually like knowing what knowing when i when i probably need to like sit and write for a bit and just be with myself and then know when i'm like okay i've it's been a little long you've been inside too long it's time to go outside and call a friend or, or do something um i i think i think we're really lucky to have technology right now like facetiming and zooming that's that's helped a lot and also writing it's and awesome. writing yeah. is that yeah. how you're expressing your creativity right now is through doing more writing or 
are there other ways that you are being an actress, a singer? Yeah, you know, yes, definitely writing. When when we first were quarantined in March, I felt zero inspiration. I was, I, it was everything was so um, unknown that I, I didn't quite, I didn't know what to do with myself, essentially. Um, and it wasn't until May when I was here, it was right before my birthday, I just got up every day and started writing, no matter what. It's similar to when you do the morning pages I in the artist's say, way. The camera in the artist's way, morning pages. Morning pages. Yeah, it I is, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's one of the things that has helped me so much. And and it was, a, it was preparation for me writing this piece, but I, started writing and then I was in the shower one day and I was like, oh my God, what if I turn this into so-and-so or such and such, you know? And and I don't know if I ever will, but I but I committed to writing every day. And now when I don't do it for a few days, it feels strange. Even if I just sit and type something stupid. I mean, it's like just getting anything out has helped me a lot. But now I think because we're getting settled into this way of life, I've, I've done readings. I've done readings of new musicals over Zoom. Yes, you have. Um, yeah, yes, I have. Um, I, I've, I'm starting to get some auditions now. I, you know, hopefully some some TV stuff is is going to be opening up. Um, but I also am just singing around the house. I forgot how much I like to sing because I haven't done it in a while. Just using that is a, it's another you know it's it's using your voice quite literally, but it is another form of expression and it's a, it's another form of healing for yourself for others. Yeah. Um, and you don't need yeah. a you don't need a stage to do that. No, I, I'm actually realizing how much I miss music. Also, yeah. my poor dog is like I think tired of me singing because now I just sing everything. Well, you, you are singing such a everything. Good voice. I do. I sing all the time. She sings everything. There's no more talking with Mary Mitchell. She <laughs> sings. Come with me, and I'm like, Hey, Keith, what's happening? Like, I love it. Just, it goes on and on. This but it does just, move the energy. Just, it moves. It moves, it moves the energy. The stagnation. And what we don't want right now is to be stagnant. Right. You right. Know, it, free, it frees up that creative aspect. I was just looking at a show that you're on right now on BBC this year, 2020, right? Yeah. Called Get Even. Yes, and it's coming to Netflix on Friday. Oh, so it's not out here yet? No. Well, I found it very interesting, the DGM. You know, oh, yes. I the timing of that show about people who have been bullied, who want to bring light to the people who bully, uh, you know, everything's kind of resonating, coming together the same for you right now. It really is. We love that. I love alignment and synchronicity. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I filmed it last summer um, when I was in London and Dream Girls had closed in January and I got my work visa. Um, so I'm able to now go back and forth, which is so excited because I love London so much. I miss it very much. Um, yeah, and I and I we filmed the show last year, and uh, they were like, "It's coming to Netflix. It's coming to Netflix." Because everyone here has been asking, and the timing of it now coming out at the end of the month is is perfect. And it's the story is so good. It's based on a book. I'd never heard of the book, but it's a teenage sort of young adult series. Um, and DGM stands for Don't Get Mad. And so this group of girls forms an unlikely alliance. They're, they're from four different sort of social groups in this, this girls, this private school. And they all have the fact that they've been bullied in common. So they form this secret society and one, they pull public pranks on people, on the bullies. And one of the public pranks goes horribly awry and someone dies. And so it's this mystery to see who, mm -hmm. who killed the, who killed the bully. And it arrives for us on Friday? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to check that out. Yes. You've, you've actually managed to like do a lot of reinvention of yourself, I feel like, during this time frame. I mean, do you was that intentional, do you think? Or was that did that just sort of happen? Or do you feel like it's just from staying in movement and sort of in self-discovery? Or? or are you just a positive person and you're good at resilience? Are you an optimist? Yes. I am. I think, um, I mean, I, I have moments, you know, I'm, I'm very much a Gemini where <laughs> Lee Silverman said to me one time when we were doing Sweet Charity, she's like, you know, she's like, you have these like two sides. You're like ray of light and then cynical bitch. <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, I am. Um, <laughs> that feels right. but a cynical it's, bitch it's, can be a ray of light. 
That's because right. sometimes yeah. it just has to cut through the bullshit. Right. And then the light opens up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Um, and then, then what she said after that was like, that's why we get along. I was like, I thought so. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely consider myself an optimist. I have times where I don't feel so optimistic about, about life or my situation or, you know, the industry that I'm in, you know, and I think that's natural. Um, but I think what, what has allowed me to get to this place of reinvention is that I, that I am lean into it. Mm. Um, and then I have, I, I committed to using this time to, to do work on myself. And I don't think that if I had, I not done that, none of these things would have, would have, would have come about. I mean, I wouldn't have written this piece. I wouldn't have felt strong enough or grounded enough to, to, to share something like that. So vulnerable. And I think that's very important. And a lot of people were talking about that in these shows that we're doing, Mary Mitchell, is that, you know, right now we have this time. So we do get to choose how to use the time. We can use it by being frustrated and angry, resentful or scared. And that's fine if you feel it, but then it has to be transformed and it can yeah. be transformed into purpose. You said something that really hit me in your op-ed piece because I'm in the, here, I'm here in the South and I hear a lot about um, Black Lives Matters, you know, being opportunistic during this time of right. um, COVID. But you were like, you are making us get out in the middle of a pandemic to protest. It's like, we don't want to be out in a pandemic. And I had never thought about that, that, that you have this group of people who know that they're putting their life at risk, but they have no choice because now is the time. Can you speak about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally a matter of life and death. That's, that's it, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's too, it's, it's a two sided thing, right? Because I think that there, there are a lot of black people who, which I also say in, my, in the article of like, we're tired. I mean, it's like, we are tired. This is, this is not new. It's just the fact that everyone is, has the time and the, and the space to, to really take, take notice. This has been going on for years. And I think what the reason why so many of my friends and I were having those days where we stayed in bed all day is because this is something that's, that we've been watching, you know, over and over and over again. And so it's, it's that it's going, I'm tired, acknowledging that I am exhausted. I am worn out. This, this continues to happen and going out anyway and activating. However, that is, however, that looks to you, signing petitions, raising money, um, going out and protesting, you know, there, there's so many different ways to do it. Um, but I, but I think, yeah, we, we, we no longer have the luxury of just pretending that, that nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like for, from a, from a white person perspective, just acknowledging like my friends are waking up in a lot in bigger ways. And some of us had like some idea, but not fully, you know, I've gotten into, I've gotten into some really amazing conversations in the last few weeks with some close friends. Um, who are not white, but just about the the like small and big differences of moving through the world in a black body and just the way that you process different things and different things have different resonance. Yeah. And it's and it's really, really deep. And it gets deeper really deep. and deeper. Like yeah. we think we, I thought, and a lot of my friends thought that, okay, read a book and have a weak conversation and you've got it. No. no. No, I mean, this is, it is, you know, it's trauma that's been downloaded for centuries and, you know, years and years and years. And um, intergenerational trauma, we talked about that last week. Like, yeah. yeah. Transgenerational, intergenerational, it's passed down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, this, and, the, and the, 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 the effed up part of it is it's passed down to both of us. So like we have the trauma of our ancestors and you have the trauma of, of your ancestors but for some reason, some of us are not willing to understand that the trauma has been passed down to us. Right. We think that it happened in the past and it's not part of us, even when science says, I mean, you can document 
trauma that's been ta- passed down for at least seven generations mm-hmm. that's just marked and but it can be resolved it can be resolved by making these changes that we're talking about it can be resolved yeah. by reaching out resolving your own internal trauma how well, you know, I, I i'm sorry i just wanted yeah. to say that because you you study and you study you you work in energy medicine i very much believe in energy and that is it's energy Mm-hmm. It's again, that is energy. It's energy that, that we're carrying, you know, it's like going outside. Imagine like you bring in other people's energy just from being outside in the city all day. Imagine what you what you carry that was passed down from your from your parents and their parents. It's like it's still it's all there. And I think that I think what the, the challenge is, the, the, the reason that it's hard for people to have these conversations is because it's very uncomfortable. It's it's not ideal to look uninformed stupid you know stupid or um vulnerable you know it's i think that's the that's the that's the root of it you know we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable right and be willing to sort of make mistakes and own them yes so that's a big one it's a huge one that's a big one (laughs) i make mistakes i mean you know and that that's listen i grew up I would cry when I got math problems wrong. I am like a recovering perfectionist. I can totally see that about you. I can totally oh, see that about oh, you. I, <laughs> you saw me in Sweet Charity. I mean, like, I am like, I, oh man. It's, yeah, my, my dad would like try to correct my math problems. And I was like, it was, it was awful, you know? So I had, I understand that more than, more than anybody that it's, that it's uncomfortable, you know, that it's, it's, we want to look good, but we just can't afford that anymore. Right. Yeah, I agreed. And and I think the pandemic in many ways has sort of like made us really come to terms us of any. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. It's not going to look good. Right. In this right. Moment, like, I'm like, I have to wear pants today. Oh, man. I have to do my hair. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh-huh. cu- I'm, curious. <laughs> I'm curious because you have like brought your voice so forward. I'm curious if you have any. Um, advice for other sort of empowered black women who like are finding their voices right now do you have any advice for them hmm and i want to say just before you answer that i love the part in your piece where you made the joke of well i laid the groundwork for you i laid the groundwork for the new generation (laughs) right yes which i said to sasha hutchings Uh uh-huh out at at, we were at drinks during rehearsal for sweet charity i said i yeah I said, I, I made my career out of being token. I paved the way for you so you didn't have to be. She's, <laughs> which I forgot about. I did I ever tell you this? I forgot about saying that. She and I both forgot because we were a couple tequilas in. And the next day we were mid rehearsal for the Frug. And we were in a free, we were in some freeze. And Joel Perez was sitting on the, the his, the, the chair in his seat, in his set. Right. And he just looked at us and he was like, do you remember when you told Sasha that you paved the way for her? And we just started like crying, laughing because I forgot, I just, but it's true. I mean, she was like, it's funny because it's true. That's the thing, you know, I wouldn't have been so bold maybe with not as much tequila, but. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Finding your voice with tequila. <laughs> Any, yeah, that's my memoir. Um, <laughs> actually, it's going to be a cocktail look. That's a good idea. There you um, go. <laughs> I would, for empowered black women, I, I would say, I would say that what you have to say is important. What you have to say matters and what you have to say is important because it is your story and no one can take that away from you. Right. No and, one can and, and keep going. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Do you do you have any advice for anybody else trying to get unstuck in the middle of this uh, of this craziness? Because there are a lot oh. of people right now who are still, you know, str- on the struggle bus on the daily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just my my therapist gave me this advice during the pandemic and and even before actually. Um, she said. To be just to be gentle, be gentle with yourself, meet yourself where you are. That's it. I think that when we start, 
going on social media or watching, you know, watching whatever programs. And we, and we start to see people accomplishing all these things and it, we start to compare ourselves. And I've been guilty of it. You know, I think that you just have to appreciate where you are right now and, and take, take note of it. Um, and then beyond that, things that help, walking, taking a walk, getting outside, I, that, that helps me get out, out of my head. Um, that being gentle is very important. I say I that to patients so. all the time because people come in and they're in these tough positions. I mean, they're dealing with life and death situations or, or, or illnesses that, that they're um, struggling with. And you have to remind them, be gentle. Just one little thing, one little change can change a lot. Yeah. You can't expect everything to change in one day. You can't expect cancer to disappear in in one day. Yeah. You know, you be gentle and you just keep moving forward and making steps. It's very important what you said. It's easy to forget that, I have to yes, say. Yes, it is. Like reminder but, and also because we've been we've been in this in this pandemic for so long that we forget that we're still in it. Even though right. that you know we've 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 assumed some kind of normalcy, you know, new normalcy. We're still it. We're still in a in a pandemic, in a triple mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah, so. no, we are, and it's funny. My my therapist, whenever I'm really hard on myself, which is I don't know all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Asthma. It's like I know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that she'll say to me is like, "Would you talk to someone else in your situation? What would you say to someone else in your situation?" And of course, it's completely different. Yeah. Like I would be very kind and compassionate to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Then Why can't we yeah. show ourselves the same grace? That's that's the thing. It's like part of it's because we know all of those little shadow sides about ourselves. We know the yeah. we know the things that we think are ugly, and we have shame. And shame is so it's so hard to to work through mentally. But like you were saying, you can do it physically. You can do it by doing creative activities, working out, making just a small change and be gentle with yourself. You know, we know all that ugly stuff. So, so it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I will also <laughs> offer this too. I, I said it last time with Jessica and Raul, um, that I have a practice of listing at least one thing that I'm grateful for every day. Um, I think that it's big or small. Um, and I, I do, I have a practice with a friend of mine. We started doing it. We, we share a notes folder. Um, so that holds us accountable. But I find that that gratitude, even when you feel the lowest of the low, just finding one thing, even just saying thank you out loud, something as little as that I can, can shift, can shift my, my perspective. It does. It shifts you from, from what you're lacking to what you actually have. You leave that lack mentality. And so you realize that no matter what, there is something to be to be grateful for. Yeah. I do that too. And I always look for one thing that I'm proud of every day. So I'll, oh, I, like I'll do, I will do three things. I read one thing inspirational, find one thing that I'm grateful for, and then one thing that I'm proud of. And if I haven't done something I'm proud of, then I'll reach out at the last minute and do it. And it can be little as small as, small as you know, uh-oh. Oh, oh uh -oh. what's you doing here? Oh, I just... ooh, ooh, what do you think? I'm surprising you with some <laughs> questions. Back. It's hashtag never muted. That's right. What's it? Burr, 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 burr. Now in the house. Uh, what's funny is just she just she literally just said your name and then it was like you were conjured. It's well, like it, it's what you have to understand like about the witch on Broadway. Yes. What you have to about me and Asmaret is that we're we are spiritually linked. This happens to the two of us. Yes. My hair looks crazy right now because it's an earphone. I took my braids out. Anyway, sorry. I love I love it. I like linked. It. You're very linked. That's what happens. It's like you say Jessica and Asmaret like in her bedroom. She's like, and then you say Asmaret, and then me in my kitchen. I'm like, you know, this woman also right here has been one of my rocks this entire pandemic. Mine too. I will say. So, yeah. Guys.
What about yeah. you? Is, is this the therapist that Josh <laughs> keep referring to? They yeah. keep referring me, to their therapist. Cool, like, and our therapist is. <laughs> Jessica Jessica is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is not. That is not the case. No, as much as I do look to you for guidance, Jessica. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you pay for me. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for the way. <laughs> Away, guys. Don't worry. Um, well, Jessica's here to do a special lightning round of questions for you, Asmarat. Oh my yeah. goodness! Okay, you ready? I am ready. Okay. <clears throat> Some simple ones. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. Wow, somebody is in strong in her convictions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like this is a contest. See, I hear lightning and I just want to win. I understand it. I'm <laughs> competing against myself. That's the irony. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, favorite city you've ever visited? Oh, Lake Como. If you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Just wait. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, the goose pimps. Um, what are you most grateful for in this moment? Oh, three of you. Oh. What's your dream role? Uh, the one that I write for my solo show. Yes. That's what we call yeah. a boss, okay? <laughs> um, the boss. Um, what is your favorite cookie? Ooh. Oh my god! I had a dream about cookies the other night. It's so weird. What are the one? What are the cookies with the Hershey Kiss in the middle? I don't know what they're called. Thumbprints, with the, the peanut butter with the Hershey Kiss. Yeah. In the middle? I don't know what they're called, but they're good. I, like call home. That, I call that instant death. But that's no. right. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, you have allergies, Jessica's right? Jessica's allergic. <laughs> we're gonna call that the Hershey the Hershey thumb. Thumb. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, followed up by what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh. Hagen Doss white chocolate raspberry truffle. Damn, Gina. What is uh, a morning person, night owl, or both? Yes, both. Mm -hmm. um, and what is your current television obsession right now? Anything. What are you watching that you're obsessed with? Uh, I May Destroy You. Michaela Cole on HBO. Must watch that show. Is okay. it fiction? Is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? It's it's uh, it's fic it's fiction, but Michaela Cole, who who wrote and, and starred in Chewing Gum, she's a British actress. Um, it's um, it's incredible. I highly recommend on HBO. If, if you could go on vacation anywhere right now, drop everything. Where would you go? Tulum. If you could live anywhere else right now, um, that you know, like let's just pretend that the U.S. is allowed. Uh, where would it be? <laughs> uh, ooh. Ooh. Sorry, Mitchell's laughing so hard at that. <laughs> Where would I live? Oh, that's right. Where would you live? And you have to think. You're talking to a nomad. I don't. Uh. Mm. How about where would you live for a period of time? Where would you live for six months? Upstate. Oh. Near near water. Near water. You gotta be near water. Do I have time for another question? You do. Keep going, girl. Because I answer like a crackhead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, um, uh, favorite nail color? Oh, rose gold chrome. <laughs> okay, wait. I have to look up. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. I'm scared. Rose gold chrome. I am too. Hold on. H hold on, you guys. I mean, remember nail polish? I don't even, I don't. Cause... I use, uh, listen. <clears throat> no, I don't oh. remember. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Would you rather, would you rather? Oh dear. Lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? <laughs> now I see why y'all do need therapy. <laughs> She's um, asking some ooh. tough questions. I'd rather lose the ability to read. I have a lot to say. <laughs> Who are you telling me to? I got a lot to say. Would you Would you rather be married to a 10 with a bad personality or a six with an amazing personality? Married? Six yeah. with the six. Same as same. <laughs> would That's you rather- sense over beauty always. Yeah. Would you rather be able to talk to animal, talk to land animals, animals that fly or animals that live under the water? Ooh, animals that fly. 
Would you rather have all the traffic lights you approach be green or never have to stand in line ever again? Ooh. Never have to stand in line ever again. Would you rather spend the rest of your life in a sailboat as your home or an RV as your home? Can it be a, can it be an RV connected to a sailboat? I, was say, <laughs> I, listen, I don't make the rules, but the answers know you guys. You Damn guys it. <laughs> You're like, my, my questions are, have rules. I'd say sailboat then, I think. Would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into your own future or 10 minutes into the future of anyone else but yourself? Anyone else but myself. Would you rather be the first person to explore a planet or be the investor of a drug that cures a deadly disease? Investor. Would you rather Suck go on that sailboat? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, finally, would you rather go back to age five with everything you know now or know now everything your future self will learn? Ooh. That's a deep one. That's tough. I'd go back now. I would too. I would I'd too. Go back with the knowledge now. I would too, I think. Yeah. Guys, look at all of us agreeing harmony. I know. <laughs> would that the whole country could come together like we just what did. Um, Asmar, you're a gem. Jay Voss. Thank you. You are an original. <laughs> <laughs> an original gem. <laughs> Hashtag. I love you so. <laughs> never muted. I love you so. Never, never muted. <laughs> never muted. Um, Guys, that took it. off. Okay, thanks, Raul. <laughs> it real <rolled> did. <laughs> thanks, Raul for helping along that that little gem. Put um, that in the Paris review, okay? That's right. That's right. Raul's like I have to just say, like I'm all love to Raul. It's like he literally lit. Like he's at the American History Museum at his home got like a sword back there he's like here's one of my swords here's like a bourbon that was aged in a barrel in spain he's like and and, and uh, you know what are you reading today he's like i don't know i've read six shakespearean monologues and uh, you know a quote by julius caesar and <laughs> and he's the most well read that's as we're, we were texting i was like is he the smartest he's person the smartest I've person i've ever met yeah come into contact yeah. with yeah why does he it's know annoying. everything why does he know like I'd be like, oh, I'm looking at a leaf. He's like, is it an expectus patronus? Uh, Marbellalis, Julia Margulies. Anyway. <laughs> and your quote was me, 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 me. That's yeah. right. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta keep it simple. You gotta, keep, gotta keep it real. Relatable, it's relatable. Balance, it's Very relatable. <laughs> um, for the kids. You guys are awesome. I, I wish you great wholeness and wellness. <laughs> wholeness Likewise, and wellness. Likewise. Thank uh, you guys for having me again. This was so fun. Thank you. Dr. Keith, are we going to be back next week? We are going to be back next week. And next week we have um, choreographer and dancer and dance professor Scott Putman. And we have A-Step's own Austin Soro. It's yeah. pronounced Soro, right? Sora, yeah. Sora, that's right. Sora, Austin. Sorry about that our a step staff and she's a professional performer who toured on phantom amazing yep. and we're going to be talking about when movement and dance and artistry is an expression of love and for yourself and not necessarily for an audience i think it's going to be powerful it will be amazing i'm sure um <laughs> these ladies also are great dancers i will point out yeah watch this uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see who who pops in for. Um, <laughs> we'll see who pops in next week. You never know. <laughs> you, you never, never know. know. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, everybody, have a great week. You too. Bye. Happy love you, wellness, everybody. Love you guys. <laughs>